All right. All right, we'll get started in just a few minutes for those of you tuning in. Um, while you're waiting, let us know where you're watching from uh, by writing it down in the comment section below. And if I start to go over the time, you can give me a, a chat telling me that it's getting close. Sure. Give about one more minute and then we'll get started with the program today. Okay. I mean, I will not see who's there or how many of them there are, right? All I'll see is this. Yep, yep. We've got, we've, we are currently live on Facebook, Kristen, and we've got some folks tuning in, people from um, Urbana. Uh, got about 15 people tuning in already, so. <clears throat> My internet connection is unstable. Oh, that is a drag. <laughs> yep, I guess we'll just uh, go with do our best here. Got folks tuning in from Birmingham, Alabama, Aurora. Hello. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, all right, uh, let's go ahead. I'm gonna stop screen sharing and we are going to start today's program. Okay, well, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in out there. Um, my name is Pat Kane, uh, Public Programs and Visitor Services Coordinator at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. And I am very excited to get today's program started. Uh, another event in our special exhibit speaker series. Um, I want to especially thank uh, Kristen Lems for joining us this afternoon to present what is sure to be an awesome program titled Songs and Stories from the Women's Movement in Champaign-Urbana from 1973 to 1983. Um, we will get to the program in just a few moments. Um, uh, before we get there though, if you haven't done so already, uh, let us know where you're watching from today by writing it in the comments section below. Um, Kevin is watching from Urbana. Perry is watching from Urbana. Judy is watching from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh -huh. Anne is watching from Aurora. Uh, uh, Katie is watching from Urbana. Joyce is tuning in from Champaign. So write it down below. Let us know where you're watching from today. We always love to see where folks are tuning in from. Uh, today's program is tied to our newest special exhibit uh, that we opened in March uh, of this year, titled How Long Must Women Wait? Women's Suffrage and Women's Rights in Champaign County. 
Uh, this exhibit helps commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment's ratification to the U.S. Constitution. Um, the exhibit explores the women's suffrage movement locally and nationally as only one landmark in a long continuing struggle for women and other marginalized people to claim an equal role in society. Um, so if you haven't had the opportunity to see that exhibit yet, come on out to the museum um, during our open hours uh, to come see it, or you can check out a virtual tour of that exhibit space on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Um, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Museum of the Grand Prairie, um, uh, the museum opened originally as the Early American Museum in 1968. And for over 50 years, we've been collecting, preserving, and interpreting the cultural and natural history of Champaign County and East Central Illinois. Uh, the museum uh, is part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District, um, which is a collection of uh, six forest preserves and other educational facilities um, right here in Champaign County. Um, and our museum is located at Lake of the Woods Forest Preserve. I uh, had some lovely sponsors help contribute to this year's special exhibit speaker series. And it's made possible with support from them and some un and some other independent donors. Um, and these sponsors, uh, these businesses are all women owned or women led businesses and organizations. Um, uh, and those sponsors include Campfire Concepts, Shambanamoms.com, Five Foot Productions, Guth and Associates LLC, Jesse Marie Studio LLC, the McGuire Home Collection, Organizing CU, Page Roasting Company, Simply Anchored Boutique, and the Right Start Preschool. Be sure to visit these local businesses and organizations or their websites and help support these great people and these great organizations who are helping support this year's speaker series. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the Museum of the Grand Prairie, we're, we're now open on a limited basis. We just started two weeks ago. Uh, we're open Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays um, from uh, 1 to 5 p.m. Please visit our website or social media pages to learn how to sign up to visit. Um, uh, Champaign County Forest Preserve District areas are still open for you to explore, so uh, come out and visit them if you can. Um, uh, and if you're uh, out there, we recommend that you maintain a safe social distance from others and wear a mask while you're exploring the preserves. Um, so uh, since the pandemic began, we have upped our social media and digital presence at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. Um, uh, and this includes posting a number of videos, including uh, some summer camp videos recently. Um, our educators are putting together some awesome uh, uh, camp in a bag uh, um, setups that you can purchase since we can't do summer camps this summer. Um, we're doing virtual museum Mondays and virtual summer in the schoolhouse programs on our, on our social media pages. We're highlighting pieces and artifacts from our museum's collection, publishing oral history clips, stories of local history, and much, much more awesome digital content being put on all of our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and good uh, for some awesome things to do. Uh, one last thing to promote, um, uh, we're, we started a new uh, virtual concert series this past week uh, titled Soloists for Suffrage. Uh, this virtual concert series uh, will feature talented local female solo artists performing intimate sets live from our special exhibit space, uh, How Long Must Women Wait, Women's Suffrage and Women's Rights in Champaign County. Uh, we had our first event this past Thursday featuring the Dawn Patrol and it went really, really well. And our next virtual concert will stream on Thursday, August 20th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. live on our Facebook and YouTube pages where we will feature the talented local artist, Karina Say. Uh, for more info, more information about what we're doing at the Museum of the Grand Prairie and throughout Champaign County Forest Preserve District, uh, visit uh, www.museumofthegrandprairie.org, uh, www.ccfpd.org for the Forest Preserve District's website and our various social media pages. Um, again, encourage you to let us know where you're watching from and uh, click that share button, share the stream so you can watch alongside your Facebook friends uh, so we can have as much fun as possible. Um, other folks tuning in, uh, Barbara from Champaign, uh, Lynn uh, from Godfrey, uh, Illinois. Uh, Joyce uh, says she wants to say hi to Kristen. She was one of the uh, chainers. Um, and uh, Joyce, if you want to interact and every, everyone else, if you want to interact, um, simply write comments down below and I will send those messages to Kristen. Uh, so thanks everybody for tuning in.
And um, enough of me talking, I am now going to introduce our special guest today and then turn it over to her. Um, so Kristen Lems, uh, Kristen, has, uh, Kristen lived in Champaign-Urbana continuously from the fall of 1973 to the fall of 1983 and was an active performer, organizer, recording artist and activist during those years. She founded the National Women's Music Festival, which first took place on the campus of the University of Illinois in the spring of 1974 and continues to this day, now located in Middleton, Wisconsin. She recorded three 45 RPM records and three full length albums of original songs during that time. As a member of several Champaign-Urbana feminist groups, she took an active part in the movements for women's rights, especially the drive to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, both in Illinois and nationally. This program will be a combined musical performance and historical reminiscence of her musical and political activities in Champaign-Urbana, featuring original songs and songs of the National Women's Music Festival, as well as never publicly seen historical posters, photos, and artifacts from those years. Um, so I'm very, very excited for this program. One last thing, if you have any questions for Kristen, again, write those down in the comment section below and we will answer those questions at the end of the program. But without further ado, let's enjoy, let's learn, let's reminisce, and let's give a warm virtual welcome to Kristen Lems. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And uh, you know, it's kind of serendipitous. If, if this were taking place live, I'd be in Muhammad, Illinois, and only those of you that could make it to Muhammad would be part of the show. So isn't it cool that you can be streaming from, whether it's Alabama or Godfrey or <laughs> wherever it is you're streaming from, that is really fantastic. And I'm in my daughter's bedroom, so <laughs> in Evanston, Illinois. This is a great thing and I'm, I'm really excited about it. And you know, one of the things this whole horrible pandemic has reminded me of is that you kind of have to make a path somehow or other through whatever obstacles and opportunities you find presented to you. And sometimes you just have to make it up as you go along. And um, you know, if you just have a good ethical sense about what you want to see in the world and how you'd like to make it happen, then you find a way. And so the, the National Women's Music Festival and really my whole time in Champaign was kind of guided by that, that same spirit. I have to let you know that um, when I came to Champaign-Urbana, I was really visiting my sister. I just spent a year teaching English in Iran at um, age 21, 22. So I don't really know why they hired me, but nevertheless, I spent a year in Iran. Then I just came down to visit my sister in Champaign-Urbana and I wandered into the Asian studies office, a little you know, ramshackle uh, wooden building and, and, and spoke to them in Farsi, which I learned in Iran. And they said, well, we have an assistantship for you if you wanna get a master's in Asian studies. So I really didn't know what else I wanted to do. And so uh, I, I signed up and I got a two master's degrees while I was at uh, U of I, UIUC, I guess you call it now. But uh, in the meantime, the, I'm certainly not doing this performance today because of my scholarly talents. <laughs> I was very active as an activist and singer during those years. And I just think it's a wonderful opportunity to supplement the discussion that you're having that the exhibits about 100 years of American women's suffrage. By the way, we have to say American because a lot of nations had women's suffrage before America, I'm sorry to say, but uh, the American women's suffrage movement, the 100 years of it, the 10 years that I spent in Champaign-Urbana were, were really part of the legacy of that whole thing. So, um, so I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you. I'll, I'll bring it on and off from time to time. Let me put on my granny glasses here to share screen. <laughs> All righty. And I'll go back up to the top. So I hope you can all see this. Yep, so we are we are seeing it, Kristen. All right, just a second. Let me start from the top. Uh, here's what I want to share with you. All right. So I am a bit of a pack rat and I collect a lot of uh, 
you know, uh, clippings and so on. Uh, clippings got, excuse me, I have to go back to the first page. There we go. Um, and, and I've just sort of stored them away. And I suddenly realized this is good stuff. This is stuff that other people are interested in too. Um, some of the newsprint is kind of, you know, <laughs> fragmenting now. And uh, so I've, I've organized it a little bit and I noticed some wonderful things about my 10 years in Champaign-Urbana. And by the way, I, I'm not a historian. And so I may say things that are incorrect or you have more additional information. Just let me know and <laughs> I'll fix it. These are some of the buttons that I collected during my 10 years in Champaign-Urbana that were specifically about the women's movement. And I was involved with other uh, issues and causes too, but these, I, I pulled them out of a big bag <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you a moment to take a look at them. Maybe some of you have terrific, you have a shoulder bag. That was even really before a lot of us use backpacks. And so the entire strap of the shoulder bag would be covered with buttons. <laughs> that was kind of a way of introducing yourself to people. So these are some of the groups that I was involved with during my years there. Certainly more that I've forgotten to mention, but um, it, it takes a village. I guess it takes a whole lot of organizations to make a movement happen in a city. First, I'm gonna just let you know a little bit about my musical life in Champaign-Urbana because when I came there in fall of 73, I was not a political musician. I was not doing political material. I was really kind of a, a folky pop kind of musician. <laughs> so here you can see I performed with my sister at the ground round. We were, we called ourselves wandering menstruals. <laughs> and I was at the alley cat. Um, I was in folk festivals, I sang at Trinos, so I was very much just, uh, you know, out in the Agora, the pool that when I sang at the pool side at the IMPE pool for during New Student Week. <laughs> so then something happened and it was the National Women's Music Festival. What happened was that um, in the fall of 1973, my sister and I applied for the Red Herring Folk Festival, which was a very big event. It took place twice a year, actually. And um, when we auditioned, uh, we did not make the cut. And when the names of the uh, performers that had been chosen was, was tacked on the wall of the Channing Murray Foundation, we, we noticed that there were no women. And uh, we knocked on the door of the Channing Murray Foundation where the people that organized this lived and asked, uh, you know, why there were no women. And this classic phrase, which got me started in a direction that <laughs> never ended was, no women were good enough. And <laughs> this infuriated my sister and me. And so we put it in the Daily Illini saying, no women good enough, come to auditions for our women's folk festival. And every woman that showed up was included in the folks festival. And here is the actual event for it. We called it the Women Folks Festival. You can still see the stamp there that we needed to have to post it anywhere, <laughs> you know, in any of the buildings. This local event took place in November, 1973. And we benefited the Rape Crisis Center, I believe, uh, let's see, was it One Dollar Rita? Um, and those musicians were all uh, part of the show. And I'm still friends with the two of them, a wonderful that we have this long relationship. So it was sponsored by the University Women's Caucus and the McKinley Foundation. After that, people constantly badgered me and said, when are you gonna do another one? What's next? You know, we wanna do it again. And so over the holiday break, I started thinking bigger and thought, well, why don't we do it nationally? So um, some of these same women in the Women Folks Festival and others got together and we uh, called it the National Women's Music Festival and we organized it for six days. <laughs> in uh, April and it was just an amazing event. It was written up in New Yorker magazine and a lot of other places, especially locally. If you're interested in the history of that, you can look in the 
um, in the Daily Illini archives and also in Champaign-Urbana Courier and uh, News Gazette. There's lots of material on it and in the U of I libraries. So we had the first festival and many wonderful, amazing women showed up. None of us much knew each other, except some of the women from the Bay Area knew each other. And these are just, this is just a, a smatter of some of the photos, not just from the first festival, but just from across the festival. Uh, Chris Williamson in the lower left there, Val Gray Ward and the Kumba workshop um, in the upper left from Chicago. Vicki Randall there in the middle at the bottom uh, was a conga drum player on a, a Tonight Show for many years. You may recognize her from that. She's just spectacularly talented. When she came to the first National Women's Music Festival, she was 18. <laughs> so <laughs> Holly Near there in the upper right-hand corner, she came to the third festival. And then Malvina Reynolds there, who also came to the third festival and with whom I developed a deep friendship. A couple more photos here. Margie Adam, um, that's the group Alive, uh, amazing jazz ensemble. And there on the upper right is Ginny Clemens, who was very beloved to all of us because she would come down from Chicago every year that the festival was held in Champaign-Urbana. And she'd sit out with her banjo on the quad and there'd just be kind of an open sing-along kind of atmosphere. It was really beautiful. We could count on Jimmy, Ginny to make everybody feel at home and feel like part of the fun. So um, that festival, um, we went into debt, $7,000 debt. <laughs> we spent the rest of the year trying to, you know, bail ourselves out of debt and we had constant fundraisers. Fundraisers, 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 everything you can imagine. Just to summarize some of the things that the festival innovated, one idea was that no musician would be paid, but her expenses would be covered. And we didn't want to have a big distance between the audience and the performers. Uh, so every music amazing workshops topics by the performers, including when there were bands, each member of the band would do something about percussion or, you know, whatever it was. We had workshops all week. We offered free community housing. We had a little index card file with community members who were willing to house our visitors. And then we also had inexpensive housing in the dorms, which were empty because we always held this between semesters which was really smart because the campus was cleared of students and we had access to all these wonderful spaces like the auditorium, the Illini Union and a lot of other buildings, which during the year were so busy with all kinds of activities, we could never have reserved them. And by the way, I was, uh, we started a student organization. I was the president at age 20, Three, I think I was the oldest person in the collective. <laughs> Everybody else was an undergrad. And uh, my friend Judy Solomon was the treasurer. And of course, poor Judy got stuck with all the bills. Her name was Judy Davis at the time. <laughs> we provided free childcare. We had that concept very early that if uh, women wanted to come with children that we should uh, provide childcare. And that is still a feature of the National Women's Music Festival. It's very well uh, designed. We had all, all night indoor jam rooms in the Illini Union so that uh, women who wanted to jam on electric instruments, kind of like the garage band that a lot of young men grew up doing, but young women mostly didn't. Uh, we had a trap set there and we had electric instruments there so that women could try to get their chops going for rock and roll. And then we always held a feedback session on the last day of the festival where everybody would just gather around in a big circle and let us know what worked and what didn't. And, you know, it was not like send something in by mail. We were just all right there, <laughs> which was very important. We got great feedback, both positive and, you know, challenges. And then uh, we started the signs and highlight tapes. And I'm going to show you the very first t-shirt of the National Women's Music Festival. And I've still got it though. I don't think I've, this was my sister's brilliant idea. She said, hey, you know, Penn Hellenic always has t-shirts for their different fraternities and sororities. Why don't we make one? And she went to the store that made those t-shirts and made this one and, and came into one of our meetings and we all went, wow. 
you might not believe it, you youngins, but in those days, we didn't just have t-shirts for any old event or any old fundraiser. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a new thing. So I only have a couple of those t-shirts, but we started to have an annual t-shirt. This is the design we used for the third festival, a very beautiful one from one of our members named Janet Kirkwood. And that was on all of our materials. And we also had a beautiful design for the fourth festival. I don't remember who it was who designed it, but um, there it is. And we had piles and piles of t-shirts. We had different colors and we had, you know, different sizes and we sold them. <laughs> Our festival registration booth was in the Marine recruiting booth in the Illini Union. <laughs> We managed to reserve that booth for the whole duration of the festival, and it was uh, really the only time during the year that it wasn't recruiting Marines. <laughs> but I'll show you one more. This was, let's see, oh yeah, this is after I stopped working on the festival, but they kept on doing it. I, I attended the 10th festival. You can see the beautiful design of that one. Then we also had um, annual Highlights tapes, we got permission from all of the artists and we sold those highlights tapes. I've still got them in cassette form. <laughs> They've never been digitized. Anyway, we just kind of made it up as we went along. Here's one of the outstanding women that we had perform at the festival. Uh, we were very conscious about having women of color and uh, native women and women who had who, elders um, perform at the festival. And we're, it's so wonderful that we had Victoria Spivey she performed in 1975 at the second National Women's Music Festival. She was already very elderly. She'd been a blues singer with many of the greats of blues and vaudeville. She was in a movie and she was the first black woman in America to have her very own record label, which was called Speedy Records. She was just amazing. She, we put her up in the Illini Union <laughs> and she performed a great set. Um, it was her last year of life. She died in 1976. Another very amazing, noteworthy person was Maxine Feldman. She was at our third festival, 1976. Her early lesbian classic called Angry Athos, which I believe she put out as a 45, was the first uh, re known recording with a lesbian perspective. And uh, <clears throat> I'll never forget that the song I Am Woman Hear Me Roar was very big at the time. And when Maxine started her set, she, she got up there, a very big woman. She said, I am woman, hear me roar. Oh! And she just filled the auditorium full scream. And everybody just, you know, went crazy. She was just wonderful, unforgettable. And just to show you that by um, May 1978, this was before the third festival, I was starting to sing some of those songs in concert. So this was undoubtedly one of our fundraisers and I sang in, <laughs> in Champaign-Urbana to raise money. We were perpetually in debt. And then um, two dear friends of mine, Lynn Keller and Sherry Wolfarth, also in the music school at U of I, were, um, the three of us were concerned about the fact that none of the women who'd applied to perform were rockers, were rock and roll bands. And we just said, we can't have that. We have to have some rock and roll. So we formed a rock and roll band, basically just to perform at the third festival. And we called ourselves Ms. Conception, which I think is a timeless name. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's pictures of us online and uh, both of them, well, Lynn has gone on to be a very famous bass player. She's uh, actually had her own make of a um, base um, named in her honor, and you can look her up online. Go, Lynn. So we decided we had to have a rock band there, and so we did it ourselves. Once again, do it yourself. I was probably the worst lead guitarist that ever lived, <laughs> but I did my best. We also had Maestra Antonia Brico. A movie was made about her by Judy Collins. She was Judy Collins' piano teacher. And for years, Antonia Brico, who was Dutch born, had tried to have an orchestra to conduct. And because of sexism in the music industry, she was unable to find an orchestra that would allow her to conduct. 
So we brought her into the National Women's Music Festival and we had a pickup orchestra, the National Women's Music Festival Orchestra. And she rehearsed them every day and they performed at the festival. I think it was the first orchestra she'd conducted. I'm happy to say that later on, the New England Women's Symphony and other uh, symphony orchestras were formed that did have her conduct. She didn't live a whole lot longer after that either. So we're very proud that we brought her in. and one of the innovations they brought was signing. Uh, they and Holly Nearer brought the idea that signing would make music available to women who were hard of hearing. And um, so we would have this wonderful signer on the stage. And that is now something that is routine in the women's music festivals, that there are signers. And uh, so getting to my first release, uh, so I started, started steering in the direction of doing feminist music and more activist music. And I released my first 45, which was Mammary Glands. <laughs> Mammary Glands was performed by a Dixieland band and uh, the News Gazette covered my uh, CD, my uh, 45 release. Remember 45s, everybody? <laughs> but, yeah, I'll show you what it looked like. Just this tiny little, 45 of mammary glands. And uh, let's see, Pat and I are going to try to play this for you. Let's see, sure. I think. Can you do it or shall I? Um, I can try if you want. Okay, give it a try. Drives men insane. Well, they're in anthropox galore, and I'm just sure that you'll adore them. Cave women have the same two simple mammary glands. Whoa, whoa, Mother Nature's dairy delight. You can't make cream of butter, cause it's just a human udder, a natural mammalian sight. The men decided that a certain shape stands out more than the rest. Well, they made such a major issue. Women stuff their bras with tissue. Their shoulders back to look their best. Show off their memory plans. Oh, whoa, whoa, Mother Nature's dairy delight. You can't make cream of butter, cause it's just a human udder. A natural mammalian sign. So don't be shy, they'll pay. Oh, once you finally sold out, you may get a center fold out. A dig your dog, you're up the way with famous mammary glands. Whoa, whoa, Mother Nature's dairy delight. You can't make cream of butter, cause it's just a human udder, a natural mammalian sight. It's a multi million dollar enterprise, but no one knows what it's about. They're only memory plans. As you can imagine, that was a big hit. 
It was performed by the Memphis Nighthawks, a pre, pre, preeminent uh, Champaign-Urbana band, and uh, with the famous Ron Diwar, uh, all of them were very famous. And so that got a lot of airplay, a lot of attention, and I'm amazed to say that it actually was on some jukeboxes oh. in Champaign-Urbana. I mean, you know, like one of my goals has always been to be on a jukebox. <laughs> So, um, uh, Joyce, uh, Joyce Meyer said she was singing along. She can't believe she still remembers the words. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. Unforgettable. Pretty unforgettable. Thank you. That is so cool. So, um, you know, I see that we really don't have a lot of time left. and I'm going to skip over some of the things I'd like to do because I want you to have a chance to ask questions and so on. But that was the release of women of uh, Mammary Glands and Women Walk More Determined. I'm just going to skip over this. You can find it online. I sang uh, one of the songs from my first album, For All Women in Struggle, in 2011. And it's gotten, I don't know, like 10,000 hits. So it makes me happy. It's a, it's a serious song saying, uh, we have to defend a woman's right to choose. Oh, my sisters, oh, my sisters, be strong. So then we get to the Equal Rights Amendment. <laughs> and um, we were kind of the epicenter of the epicenter in a lot of ways because Illinois was one of the unratified states. We were within three states of ratifying uh, the Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution. Now the Equal Rights Amendment was the follow-up to the Suffrage Amendment. It had almost identical wording. Um, we used to sing equality of rights, under the law shall not be denied or abridged, let's see, by the United States or I, any other state on account of sex. I mean, that, the doxology, that was the text of the Equal Rights Amendment, <laughs> very short and sweet, and we're still struggling for it, um, but we did pass it in Illinois. It was very, very, um, energizing but also heartbreaking because we had so many close calls and of course you know Illinois is also the home of Stop ERA which was based in Alton, Illinois and also our own uh, U.S. representative um, Representative Tim Johnson voted against the Equal Rights Amendment. We had a four-month boycott. Maybe some of you in that photo are actually watching this stream right now. <laughs> I know you. Um, we boycotted his Baskin Robbins uh, to show that we were displeased by his vote against the Equal Rights Amendment. And this was called a great victory, but really all he did was um, sell out his holdings in the <laughs> in the Baskin Robbins. I wonder if it's still on, on Green Street. But anyway, we went in there and uh, we just did everything that we could think of. And of uh, those of you who are looking today who fasted, um, also chain the chainers who chain your, yourselves to the, to the Capitol, um, it was a very emotional and very dramatic time. The ERA fasters um, included some women from Illinois and um, I sang for them many times in the rotunda of the Capitol building in Springfield. It was very emotional. Um, one woman had a collapsed lung. Um, we just struggled and struggled to pass the ERA in Illinois. And it was, sorry to say, it was kind of a, a, a partisan matter, though there were some Republicans who supported it. All Democrats did and not enough Republicans did. However, um, so I released that, that CD, that, uh, I can't even say 45, that 45, Ballad of the ERA and Farmer. And Farmer was um, all about farm women who lost their farms when their husbands died because they had to pay a widow's tax. And so everybody would say, well, what's, what's the ERA gonna change? Like, you know, we don't need it. And I wrote this song, a, a central Illinois song about farm women losing their farms because of the widow's tax that said that she wasn't really the farmer, but just the farmer's wife. And that song got a lot of airplay. It was written up in Farm Journal magazine. It was played on Market to Market, which was a farm syndication. Um, and it was written up in an Ann Landers column. So I think I helped make the case that everything just wasn't hunky-dory, that we didn't have the rights that we needed and that you couldn't just solve them. Uh, one by one. And I think that the current administration is a good reminder of why we need an amendment. <laughs> so um, we had a big national rally for the ERA in Springfield, Illinois on that date. Um, this was the News Gazette. It was just a colossally big rally. 
I did sing at that rally. It was definitely the biggest uh, group I'd ever sung for. <laughs> but then when I sang in Chicago in a, a few months later, that was even bigger. We really felt we'd have the momentum, but I'm sorry to say that uh, the, the date, uh, there's 90,000 marching in Chicago uh, in 1980. And I sang with a lot of famous people. I was on stage with a lot of famous people. But um, mostly, you know, I was very uninterested in rubbing elbows with fame. I just wanted to get the darn thing passed. <laughs> so, um, and this one was uh, when uh, Lori Haig, who's on the left there playing the bass, and I performed at the Lincoln Monument for um, a national rally for the ERA. You can see uh, uh, two Bettys there, Betty Ford and uh, Betty Friedan. And I'm also blocking Lady Bird Johnson, who's right behind me. And there's Esther Roll. Anyway, uh, we had the momentum, we had the, the crowds, we had the mass movement, uh, but nevertheless, uh, some of those states just didn't pass it, so it expired. But now I'm gonna show you a happy ending, at least for Illinois, which was that we did pass it in Illinois uh, in 2017. And Laurie and I did perform at that same Lincoln statue uh, just before it passed in Illinois. And here's a picture of the much smaller, much older crowd, but um, as it says, honor your mother, uh, vote for the ERA. So we, we did uh, win the ERA in Illinois and that's very meaningful and very important. And needless to say, this spread all around Illinois, all kinds of commemorations of Women's History Month and uh, the founders of the suffrage amendment and the ERA were celebrated in many, many cities. And this one was in Edwardsville. And I wanted to show you that they had an Alice Paul day. Um, and then we also got very involved with all these other issues. We had women's wheels um, to bring women home safely at night. Um, and the fraternities and sororities were involved with it. We had a ladies choir formed, the explosion of feminist material inspired local women to organize choirs and choruses. Uh, Champaign-Urbana had one and I, maybe some of you who were um, part of that chorus are, are listening today. Then we also had Take Back the Night Marches and I do have time I think to sing one song, yeah. Um, stopping Violence Against Women was a cornerstone of organizing in our community. Uh, we were involved with many aspects of this, um, including the Rape Crisis Center and um, lobbying for uh, better laws that didn't see the rape victim as somehow a tempter or whatever. And that was very exciting. I'll just show you that one of those was um, 1981, I still have this clipping. It said it was the fourth annual <laughs> rally against violence. Um, we had um, the mayor of, of Champaign, Joan Severns and Professor Pauline Bart speaking. And I do have time to sing one song right now and I'm going to stop the screen share so you can just hear me sing this song. I never did record this one, so you'll hear it here first. I've had a vision since I was a child of going out late at night, resting my head on a grassy bed without a trace of fright. Feeling free, just the stars and me, the only sound, the beating of my heart. We have a right to reclaim the night, and I believe it's time to start. Always the rule at home and school was be careful where you go. We all obeyed, we were all afraid, and that quite rightly so. Men all around, stalking women down, till the night was taken from us. But there's only so long you can stand a wrong, I believe we've had enough. Laura, she works on the graveyard shift, and Victoria gazes at stars. 
I like to hike far from the lights, and Julie likes going to bars. Self-defense, it makes good sense, for we practice every day. It's a long, hard fight to reclaim the night, but I believe we're on the way. Take back the moon, take back the stars, take back the streets of our town. Take back the strength to go the length we need to turn things around. Take away the fear in our sisters' hearts, make a world that's safe and free. It may take all our lives, so come and take the first step with me. Take away the fear in our sisters' hearts, make a world that's safe and free. It may take all our lives, so come and take the first step with me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, probably one of my least memorable performances, but what the heck? It's yeah. showtime. <laughs> so I think rather than going any further with my PowerPoint, let's use the last 15 or 10 minutes to chat. Tell me what yeah. you'd like to remind me about or ask questions about. Yeah. Um, uh, so um, as Kristen said, if you have any questions or comments or anything, just write them in the comment section down below. I'm just going to relay a few comments that we've heard over the course of the program so far. Um, looks like uh, uh, Ann, Ann Wilson Dooley said, we were not doing that at Channing Murray much longer towards the beginning of the program talking about um your time at the channing murray foundation six great days yeah yeah six great days talking about the festival and also said um uh joyce meyer says hi that's great again she was singing along um <laughs> and and can't believe she still remembers the words yeah i mean i was at many a rally with many of you and many a fundraiser we did you know everything we could we we had fundraisers um and benefits we had a benefit for joanne little um we just we we were active and we all kind of co-evolved so we became more aware of different movements and as they bubbled up and here we were in, you know, central Illinois. So a lot of things did come to us from the coasts and so on, and from the South as well. And uh, we, we grew, we really grew. And I want to say, by the way, any of you interested in the National Women's Music Festival, please check out their website and their Facebook page. They still exist. They're beautiful. It's held in Middleton, Wisconsin every year. They took a breather because of uh, the pandemic, but I'm sure they'll be back next year in some form or other. I'm also so proud that they named an award in my honor called the Kristen Lem Social Change Through Music Award. And that was initiated on the 40th anniversary of the festival. And I came and I presented the award there and it was very meaningful. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome that they did that. Awesome that, you know, it's still, Still going on, you know, still still going strong for sure. It's incredible. Um, yeah. Uh, Lynn Burnett said my mom was at the rally in Springfield and uh, Lynn was at, was at the uh, 2017 rally. All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Kevin said he drove for Women's Wheels uh, from 1985 to 1988. Um, wow. uh, Lynn also asked, are you still involved with the festival? I know you mentioned that you just had the award, but are you still involved in any other capacity, Kristen? I donate every year and um, I've attended a couple of years when I haven't performed, but you know, since I still do have a performing life, I'd kind of like to be on the bill when I go to a festival, <laughs> but I, I love them. I admire the heck out of them and I'm just so glad they're there. It makes me very proud. It's my oldest child. 
<laughs> um, uh, Shell said, that was fun. Uh, I went to Antioch, a progressive college in conservative Southwest Ohio in the mid seventies and our community created similar memories. Um, yeah. uh, Terry Cosgrove uh, asked, what are you doing on this August 26th? Do you have a program or an event happening <laughs> yes. on the 26th? Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. On the exact 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, the day that women won the right to vote, and we were not given the right to vote, we won the right to vote. Let's use an active yeah. verb here. Yes. August 26, 2020, I'm going to be doing a live streamed concert for a North Suburban and a North uh, Illinois Now, N-O-W chapter. And uh, you can, if you follow me on Facebook on my artist page, Kristen Lim's Musician, um, there's a link to it where you can, I think they're Zooming as well as live streaming. So I'm gonna be singing some of the songs from the struggle for suffrage over the years, both early and modern um, fight songs. Yeah, it yeah. looks like, it looks like Ed, uh, Ed, Ed Gogol uh, or Goggle, uh, forgive me uh, in the last name pronunciation, but Poor guy, he's mostly uh, called Google these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mentioned that information. Um, uh, he also said details at Northwest Now and link their website. So thank you for putting that down there, Ed. Um, if we have time, if nobody else is asking a question, I, I think I could play for all women in struggle. It's just about two minutes. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, let's okay, hear it. Let's, let's hear it. Let's try it. I'd love to end with this because it's a, a very meaningful song to me in terms of my um, sharing with people. <laughs>
Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, Kristen. I um, uh, had a few other things uh, come in the comment section. Um, uh, Laura said one of my favorites talking about um, <laughs> talking about thank that you. one. Yeah. Um, uh, Darlene said, would love to sing the ballad of ERA together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have a big victory party once it gets through the courts, now that it's passed all the state legislatures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Ken said, wonderful program. Proud to know you. Thanks for tuning in, Ken. Thank you. I'm glad and we're all still here. Keep up the struggle. Yeah. Um, uh, Jerry said, I want you to know that memory glands inspired me to do a painting that hangs in my office. I saw you play at Wobbly Joe's in Pittsburgh. All right. <laughs> that is lovely. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. I think. <laughs> um, uh, Lynn said, thanks so much. This has been awesome. Sorry. We couldn't do this in person. Yeah. Would have loved to have done this in person, but Hey, I think this worked out really well, um, you know, all things considered, you know, with the current limitations, but um, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to give a special thank you to uh, Kristen uh, for putting on the program here, for joining us, taking time out of her day uh, to present, um, you know, an awesome program. Some this music, was a wonderful music. experience, and I'm just so so proud to be doing this for your museum in Muhammad. It just makes me so proud and happy. Well, we're very lucky to have you and very thankful that you were able to, to join us uh, this afternoon. Um, you know, I hope this isn't, you know, I hope this is just the beginning, you know, of things that we can continue to do, so. Me too. Um, yeah, and I'll have to uh, tune into that, that, that program on the 26th, um, another, yeah. another live virtual program, uh, celebrating a big, big, big anniversary um, in the history of this country. Um, okay, well, um, until next time, again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks, Kristen. Um, and if you have any other questions or uh, looking for more information, shoot us a message on Facebook, give us a call at the museum, find some more information on our websites and social media pages. But enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Um, it was hailing uh, quite a bit during uh, the program outside <laughs> here in central Illinois in Champaign, just outside my apartment. So I had my fingers crossed that we weren't gonna lose the connection um, and everything seems to be okay now. But those of you who are in Champaign-Urbana, I was, I was a little worried for a second, but I think we're okay. We had it here about an hour ago. It was insane. Yeah, Just completely yeah. insane. So we pulled it off somehow. <laughs> somehow, somebody's out there looking after us, so. <laughs> yes, she is. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thanks everybody. Um, and I am gonna end the live stream.